Buongiorno and guten morgen. We are back. This is part two, going over some of the most common fixed tags that you should know if you're going to be doing uh, work as a fixed analyst, uh, fixed support engineer, application support engineer, a QA, uh, connectivity engineer, whatever it is. So we went over, we're, we're using the uh, direct edge spec for this video. And in the last video, I think we ended up at the uh, reject section. So we're just going to continue moving along. So reject 35 equals three. And you have a reference sequence number, which is going to tell you the sequence number of the message that you are rejecting. Sequence number 20 had something you do not like. So you send a 35 equals three with a 45 equals 20, because that is a sequence number of the message that you're rejecting. Otherwise, how do I know what you're rejecting? Tons and tons of messages, tons of orders, tons of executions. I need to know which message you are rejecting so very common tag uh, let's see reference message type so it lets you know the message type as well a reason if you're lucky you might get a reason that actually makes sense a lot of times I've seen re reject reasons that I just kind of like oh you know so I got to call the exchange and find out what does bubblicious tubisky lusky mean like you know it's like really really vague uh well that was cryptic vague it might say something like uh invalid message okay invalid message i know exactly what to do now not so i actually got to go call up the exchange give them the information and say hey man you sent me uh, reject reason of other or whatever it is and I need to know what that is so we can fix the problem right and they'll tell you oh because uh, you can't send that type of order after 3 p.m. blah 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 or some weird rule that somehow oh, it slipped through certifications because you know normally in certifications you should pick up these kinds of problems so you shouldn't really be having uh, in production hours you know this kind of acti activity happening that's the whole point of certifications to find these kinds of problems before a client goes live but sometimes it happens so moving right along text self-explanatory not required they could put whatever they want in there hello thanks for using our system you know whatever it is uh, sequence reset and gap fill so we can send a message type of four and we can send a uh, a new sequence number. So we want to want to want to say uh, what the next expected sequence number is that we're getting back. And we can also do a gap fill. So for example, you have uh, a gap in terms of missing sequence numbers. So you're probably wondering, what is a gap fill? Why would there be a gap? You aren't you complaining because there's a gap in sequence numbers, and you're asking me to resend so I can fill in the gap? why are you indicating a gap fill because you may actually have a situation where there may be messages that uh, you do not want to resend uh, for example you could have a, an order that's expired you know why are you going to resend an expired order that makes no sense the order is no longer valid or you could have something like administrative messages like heartbeats or text requests messages so you know there's literally no point of resending old heartbeat messages so you could actually use the gap fill uh, flag to deal with that all right so moving right along let's see message type let's see this a logout so 35 equals 5 pretty standard um, you can send a text in there so 58 says text so you can say uh, you know session close for the day or something or EOD end of day or you could say uh, close due to failure any number of things you can put in there and by the way if you heard that beeping, that's because in about five minutes, you are going to have a test. So you're sitting there and you're watching these videos and you're having a great time and everything and you just think you're just going to roll right out of here. You are not, my friend, because I am going to give you a quiz. So you have to be ready. Uh, hopefully you have a pen and paper or a notepad uh, open up somewhere because I'm going to give you some questions and you're going to have about 30 seconds to answer those questions and get back to me all right we're getting interactive this year 2014 all right moving right along so we have order entry messages and let's see so we have account which is also a very common tag uh, you have uh, you know clients that are trading on behalf of uh, their customers so you know Carlisle trade let's go back to Carlisle trading so Carlisle trading I have a customer called um, uh, Jim Corp right so Jim Corp is my customer Jim Corp wants to buy uh, 100 shares of IBM so I accept their order 
and I have in tag one, I have Jim Corp in there. And then I send that order out to somewhere to get executed. And on that order is listed this uh, tag one value, which indicates the, the actual client that the order is for. So even though I have a sender sub that is, you know, my I, trader ID, so I'm the trader sending it, and I have Carlisle Trader as a, as a firm that, uh, you know, it's sending the order. I'm also going to indicate the, um, the, the potentially indicate the account that the order is for because I can be handling multiple accounts. So if I'm trading 100 shares of IBM for uh, account number one and another 100 shares for account number two, these, these uh, fills come back, who are the fills for? right and you got to think about the clearing process as well I need to keep tabs on who things are for because you have multiple clients or multiple accounts that are trading for the same stocks and things like that so very important to track this kind of information all the way down to the account level trader that's trading it firm that's sending it the account that it's for the exchange that it gets executed on all these things are, are, are very important uh, information for you to track so moving right along three minutes until our test so let's see client order ID very 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 popular yes I did I did just say Barry but anyway client order ID is very popular because that's a good way for you to drill down to exactly what order client calls you up my order got rejected which order oh, it's an order on IBM you got a thousand orders on IBM 100 shares you got 500 on, on 100 shares of IBM I need your client order ID so I know the exact order. And then you have uh, systems that could be trading in waves or batches. You know, you got an uh, algorithmic trading. You could be sending out thousands and thousands of orders from baskets and things like that. So I need to know because you could even tell me the time. You say, what time? I sent the order at uh, 9.45. But at 9.45, you sent me 100 orders in, I, I don't know, the two seconds or whatever your rate is. And, um, you know, I, how am I going to find the order? Client order ID. If I look up that tag 11 equals whatever, uh, I will be able to find the exact order. It's a unique identifier of the order assigned by the client, 20 character maximum. So, moving right along, let's see, 198, uh, let's go to 60, transact time, time of the order creation. So that's also something very common. Uh, I look at that, I think, uh, more so in latency potential issues when you're dealing with uh, high frequency trading. For example, you have a potential latency complaint from a client. I want to look at, uh, obviously, all the timestamps, and hopefully I have, uh, uh, you know, serious time precision. You know, sometimes you may have time in seconds, which really doesn't do you much if you're looking at a high frequency trading setup. I want to look at uh, microseconds, milliseconds. I mean, I really want to see some real time precision. So moving right along, symbol, very popular. <laughs> it's all about symbols, right? You're trading securities. You want to know which security? Uh, symbol suffix. So sometimes you have uh, something dot something, right? So that's where you can have that. You can have the symbol in 55 and the suffix for that symbol in 65. Side, very common. Buy or sell, sell short, sell short exempt, very, very popular. 38, how many shares, how many contracts? You need to know that. Max floor. So this is uh, displayed on an order quantity on a, on a reserve order. So pretty much what this is going to do is this is going to indicate how much shares are actually going to be shown. Um, so for example, you see here it says a max floor quantity of zero will indicate a fully hidden order. Aha! You are in trouble now. Time for a quiz. Time for a quiz. All right, so get your pen and paper, get your notepad ready, and um, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to answer this question or questions. All right, here we go. So, in, uh, in the process of tracking orders, I need to track a lot of different things about an order in terms of um, the, the purpose of the order, in terms of uh, you know, who the order is for, in terms of who sent the order as well, who the order was sent to. Can you tell me, and you have 30 seconds to write this down, tell me all of the identifiers for tracking purposes of who sent the order, who the order is for, who is it being sent to, who is it being um, executed by, uh, what are all those tags that are relevant to those things that we discussed? And you have 30 seconds starting now. Go. All right. 
Let's see if you got the answer to this correct. So the correct answer is um, number one, account. So tag one. We want to know who uh, the order is for, right? Number two, we want to look at tag 50, sender sub ID. That can indicate the desk or the trader who actually sent the order. Number three, tag 49. So sender comp ID. Let's actually go up to that section. Hope we don't remember where, remember where we are now. So 49, sender comp ID. And then you have, so this is what we're talking about here. So sender comp ID. And then you have the target comp ID, 56, tag 56. Hopefully you got that one. And also the target sub ID and bonus is one that I actually didn't mention to you guys. And hopefully you watched my other video about uh, the fixed references online and you were able to look it up. Uh, 30 seconds was not much time, but you should have been able to quickly look it up. The other thing I mentioned was exchange. Who executed the order? We know the order was for this client. We know the order was sent by this trader from this desk. We know it was sent from this firm. We know it was sent to, to this uh, brokerage or to this exchange. And who was it executed? Who was the order executed by? Which exchange? Which exchange executed the order? What tag is that? We did not mention that tag. Let's see if we can find it in here. We did not see it. Let's just do a quick search. Let's say exchange. See if you guys found the correct answer. It may it should be in here somewhere. Routed. Rerouted by exchange. Okay, I'm not seeing it here, but what we can do is go to my favorite website, Fiximit. And we can do a little uh, regex search here. So let's just type in uh, exchange. See if it comes up. Or we could try exec. There we go. Exec broker. So exec broker is going to indicate the give up. Basically, this is basically indicating the exchange that it's coming from. So uh, there's going to be a give up for NYSE, NASDAQ, you know, whatever it is. So you have exec broker, and then you also have another tag, which we can just type in right here, tag 100, indicating exec destination. So we have exec execution destination as defined by the institution when an order is entered. So that's how you can target a particular exchange. So with those tags, we know the exchange the order is going to. We know the give up of where the execution is coming back from. We know the trader who sent the order, the firm that sent the order. Uh, we know where they sent the order to, so the target comp ID. We know also which account the order is for. So there you have it, some of the most common uh, identifiers in terms of um, an order, where it's coming from, who it's going to, all that stuff, all that ownership information. So. Moving right along, lost my place here. Hang on one second. So I think this is where we left off here. So side, order quantity, max floor. Again, we said that's how much is going to be displayed on the floor at any given time. This is kind of a thing that I believe you can conceal your interest. So I have a million shares to trade, but I don't want to show a million shares on the floor. So I set a max floor of 1,000. So at any one time, you're only going to see 1,000 shares of my million share order. Uh, displayed on the floor. So that's your max floor. Then you have uh, order type. So in this case, it looks like they do not accept market orders, and that's specific to Direct Edge. But um, order type, you could have uh, 42, for, I'm sorry, 40 equals 1 or 40 equals 2. So that it really depends on you know what type of order the order is, whether it's a market order or a limit order. Moving along, you have price, so price on the order. Uh, time and force, so that's how long the order is going to be relevant to. So a day order is relevant today. You can have a good till cancel. They obviously do not support good till cancel, but that's another thing where you know the order will stay live until you cancel it. So it could be a multi-day order in that uh, respect. Expire time, you're setting ex expiration on the order. And again, I'm skipping things that this occasionally relevant depending on your environment, but not so common. And we're running out of time here. So 
That will complete this episode of most common fixed tags for support engineers to know. There will be a third part to this video. We definitely like the video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and thanks.